All right, welcome. I see some attendees starting to uh, filter in here for our Recruited Athlete Celebration Zoom webinar. We are so glad you guys could join us um, this evening as we celebrate these students. I'm just gonna give it a couple minutes to let our attendees filter in and then, um, and then we'll get started. But uh, while you're joining and seeing our screen here, um, just know that on the screen you're looking at, these are our 22 student athletes who have been recruited to play um, next year uh, for their colleges. So a huge congratulations to them. I also wanna just let you know, as we're waiting for our attendees to filter and pop in, that um, we are recording this event and we'll um, be looking forward to sharing it out um, as well afterwards. But we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Travis Bell. I'm the principal at Akamani's High School um, and so honored to, to be the principal of such a distinguished school. Um, it's been such a joy to, um, to be the principal at Akalani's, um, and that is namely because we have such amazing, uh, wonderful, and talented students and an incredibly supportive community um, that we are a part of here in Lafayette at Akalani's. I wanna thank everyone who's able to join tonight. Thanks for your flexibility. Thanks to our, our athletes on screen with us and to, um, to our other parent volunteers for joining us and helping make this event happen with the flexibility. This is normally a very, um, personal uh, and loud celebratory event that we hold in our gym um, and we adjusted obviously um, due to the uh, pandemic and want to thank everyone for being willing to adjust yeah. to this online format format we are here tonight because we are celebrating these uh, 21 student athletes these seniors for a remarkable achievement each one of these student athletes have been recruited by their college or university to become a student and represent their college in an intercollegiate sport. We recognize them today because we know that academic success and athletic success are hard enough to realize in isolation. Um, to do so both simultaneously to succeed in both um, is worthy of celebration. And we are so glad that we get to celebrate and recognize you guys tonight. We also recognize that for these student athletes, pursuing their sport in college has likely been a long time dream. And we wanna congratu congratulate you for pursuing and achieving that dream. To the students, I do want you to know that as the principal, um, I, I uh, personally congratul congratulate you and speaking on behalf of our school and district, I just wanna tell you how proud we are of you and how proud we are of your accomplishments. Um, and we are gonna be proud to call you Akalani's alumni um, in just over a week. I also wanna give a huge uh, shout out and thank you to our Athletic Boosters organization um, that is made up entirely of parent volunteers who work ty tirelessly throughout the year to support our athletic um, programs. I know for many of you parents that are watching, um, even if you weren't on the Athletic Boosters board, you volunteered in different capacities, whether that was driving kids to and from athletic events um, or showing up just to cheer on our students, um, our student athletes at their games, as well as supporting them in their academic endeavors as well. So a huge congratulations and thank you to our parent volunteers as well. I also wanna give a very special thanks to, to uh, Julia Bates, who's on that screen there with that big white A. Um, technically, that's an illegal A and not our official A, Julia, but I won't hold it against you, um, who really worked to put this whole event on and together um, and had to shift to making this online format happen. And so Julia, thank you so much for making this happen because it literally wouldn't be happening without you and your communication um, in, in bringing this um, together. So Julia, thank you. Um, and of course, I also want to thank our Boosters uh, co-presidents um, being uh, represented here by Dan Mead, um, but also Jim Burley, who, um, who have just put in a ton of hours in helping to make sure our um, athletic boosters at Akalani's um, is running efficiently and effectively. Um, and so Dan, thank you so much. Thanks for being here tonight as well. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Dan Mead, who will be our uh, host uh, for the night. So, Dan, take it away. All right. Thank you, Principal Bell. I appreciate you very much. You've always been a supportive of everything, academics and athletics and arts and everything included to make us uh, kind of a well-rounded place for our kids. Um, 
So Akalani's boosters, I'm Dan Mead, I'm the co-president along with Jim Burley. Um, the boosters, for most of you know on this call, is the fundraising organization that, that really supports every single sport at Akalani's, every single team. Um, high school sports are not funded by the state of California other than facilities. Um, but so it's generally a parent funded thing and the boosters facilitates that and we're able to to affect you know every kid who plays a sport and allow plenty of opportunity for anyone who wants to participate. Um, we are also pivoting as an organization this year. We had our booster batch, which is our, our big event of the season, and um, that had to be canceled. Um, but we hope to have an event in the fall just to will be kind of a welcome back for, a, for the Don's community. Um, we are able to do some other things that we generally do during the years, in, including this um, this athletes uh, recognition award for those who've been uh, recruited to play at the next level. So enough about the boosters. This is tonight is really about the athletes uh, and their families and what they've accomplished. So we'll go ahead and get right to them. Um, I would ask you to hold your applause till the end, but um, you know, since this is all virtual, you can go ahead and applaud all you want. Just make sure you're on mute. Um, okay, so may I please have Zoe Benesek? Okay, Zoe, how Hi. are you? Um, so I'm well, Zoe, how are you? I'm doing great. Um, Zoe is going to be playing water polo for the Connecticut College Camels, um, and uh, that's an awesome thing. So if I could just ask you, um, what specifically, you know, academically and athletically, led you to pick Connecticut College. What are the things that, that you said, you know what, this is, this is the sort of thing that I wanna go be a part of? Um, well, I chose Con because I knew that I wanted to go to a small liberal arts college on the East Coast. And the fact that they're like one of the only ones that had water polo sealed the deal for me. Um, I was initially looking at like a lot of D1 schools and even some schools abroad, but I visited last May and met the coach and team and just fell in love with the campus, the friendly people and all the academic opportunities, um, which helped me establish it as my top choice. I also liked the fact that like while it's a D3 school, their athletics are still really competitive and women's water polo isn't like a huge sport still. Um, so Khan gets to play against teams from all divisions. So I liked that too. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's fantastic. Basically. Yeah. So there are some, there are some other California kids out there, right? Yeah, there are. I did notice. I know there's five California kids on the roster. So you're going to have some familiarity out there, but congratulations, mm -hmm. Zoe. Uh, you're going to do great. And, and, uh, and uh, good luck to you. Thank you. Okay, may I have Charlie Betancourt, please? Hello. Hello, Charlie. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Um, I like the water polo hair. Um, UOP, men's water polo. Yes. It's five hours east over to Stockton. Are you excited? I'm very excited. Yeah. Awesome. That's Me. a great opportunity. What, um, so you've been playing water polo for quite a while. Yeah. How long? Uh, I started playing when I was 10, so long time, eight years. Great. And you have, do you have uh, some familiarity with the coach over there at UOP? Uh, I do. I've, the, one of the coaches at UOP was my first water polo coach ever. He coached me when I just started playing when I was 10 years old. So it's kind of like my water polo journey is coming full circle, going to play for him now in college. That's great. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, what's um so what's his coaching style like? Is he a is he a uh, disciplined guy or is he a There's two head coaches in my coach who originally coached me when I was younger is more of the nicer coach, less intense, more like the nice cop. Uh but the other coach named James, he's very statistical, knows a lot about the game, he's very hardcore. I just think that under his coaching I'll be able to become the best water polo player I can be. That's awesome. That's that's a uh... That's a great approach. You know, I was um, looking a little bit at, at the schedule that you guys play up there and names like Cal, Stanford, USC, UCLA. I mean, that's uh, you're going to be with, uh, you know, in the water with a lot of probably people you played against, but some, you know, Olympians and, and real accomplished players. So you're going to do great. And uh, yeah. Go Tigers and 
Nice job. Sweet. Thank you. All right. Uh, Kate Carter. Uh, how are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, Kate is going to be attending Chapman University for girls soccer. Um, the girls soccer at Akalani's is, has a special place in all of our hearts after this NCS championship they brought home, including watching Kate make some incredible saves as we they battled deep into the night with Branson. Uh, that still was just an unforgettable night, and you were a big part of that. So that's awesome. Um, could I just ask you a similar question? You know, you had a lot of choices, and something led you to Chapman. What was it about the athletics, the academics that really helped you kind of nail that down? Well, I really wanted a D3 school because I wanted to balance like athletics and academics. Um, I found Chapman because I wanted a school in Southern California with D3 athletics. It's near the beach and I liked um, how it was also near LA. I visited two times and I met the team and they are all super nice and the facilities are um, outstanding for a D3 school. That's all the reasons I chose it. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, and you've always been an athletic girl. I mean, I know you've played a ton of sports growing up um, and you played multiple sports at Akalani's. What do you think you would do differently if you were starting as a freshman in the fall at Akalani's? Well, I played soccer and lacrosse and I really enjoyed my lacrosse years. Um, for I played all three years, but I didn't play senior year. Um, and then soccer, my first two years were really rough because I didn't really like my coach. And I wish I would have told myself that um, don't take anything for granted because it's such a short season and um, to always have a positive attitude. That's great. Well, listen, you're gonna do great. City of Orange is a really cool town from what I hear. So you're gonna have lots of fun down there and uh, go Panthers. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, could I please have Mac Darren? Mac, how are you? You hear me, Mac? I think I hear you. Mac, you there? Mac, do you hear us? Uh, we can, Mac, I'll give you one more. Are you, uh, Mac, you there? Oh. All right, we can go back to Mac. Um, can I please have Mary Beth Heffelfinger? No, Hi, Mary Beth, how are you? <laughs> okay, Matt, wait a minute. Let's, let's, uh, maybe we should do this. Mac, are you with us now? All right. Mac is muted. Mac, you there? Okay, let's try Mary Beth. Mary Beth, you there? Yes. Okay, great. You see Santa Barbara for water polo. You excited? Yeah. Yeah, so Mary Beth was part of the legendary Akalani's water polo team that, that you're all going to be hearing about that hasn't lost a game since the Stone Age. Um, and just uh, so much, the level of competition amongst you and your teammates, I'm sure all year in the pool is just unbelievable. Um, so you had to be pretty good to be on that team and be a, be a contributor and like you were. And um, where do you think you get your athletic genes? Um, I think probably like both my mom and my dad played sports, but my dad went and played rugby through college, which is a pretty like hands-on rough sport. So I think I get a lot of it from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's that, does that help your confidence being out there knowing you can mix it up a little bit and if you have to? Yeah, definitely. Great. Awesome. So what about, uh, what about the, the, not to get too serious, but what do you think you're going to major in and what do you think that would lead you to? And, and uh, what do you think about, you know, water polo in your future or just being in the pool? 
Um, I'm currently majoring in pre-biology on a pre-med track, and I want to go to med school after getting undergrad at UCSB. And water polo is kind of a, like just ends at college unless you go to the Olympics like some other people. So I think I'll probably stop after college. Oh. Right. Well, that's great. Now, let me ask you this. So there's a lot to love in Santa Barbara. You're going you're gonna to have a, obviously a heavy academic load, heavy athletic load, and you're, at, you're there at Isla Vista down on the beach. So what do you choose on Friday afternoon, the pool, the library, or the beach? Um, probably depending on practices. I'll definitely not skip any practices um, but, and focus on my schoolwork, but I'm going to try to balance everything. Yeah. Awesome. Well, great job. Congratulations, Mary Beth. Thank you. All right. Could I have Logan Hurd? How are you? Hey, Logan. How you doing? Good. Thank you. Good, good. So Logan is going to go down to Loyola Marymount to join the Lions down there. Um, Logan is part of the reigning Diablo Athletic League champion Akalani's Don's baseball program. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, these guys, like all the spring athletes, have unfortunately missed their senior year, which the expectations were super high. So it's very bittersweet for a lot of these players and families. Um, and I know baseball, I've seen you out there, you know, since you were pretty small. So how long have you been playing and when did you start and how did this all kind of get started for you? I really started playing baseball when I moved to California. So like around third, fourth grade. And um, yeah, I, uh, my first ever position or my first ever time playing, I was pitcher and I, I struck out the side and I like knew like I loved pitching and I wanted to like continue this. So that's really kind of where it started, you know, yeah. playing there. That's awesome. As a fellow pitcher, I know once they give you the ball, it's hard to give it back, right? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, so now tell me a little bit about your new coach up down there at LMU or, or the program or anything you're looking forward to there. Yeah. So uh, head coach, Nathan Choate, he, uh, it was his first year or yeah, it was going to be his first year, you know, until they got cut short. But um, I really love that, you know, he's a really down to earth guy, but uh, you know, he's very competitive and uh, he, like, you know, he told me, especially on his business, like how much he wants to win. And that really like fired me up. And uh I really wanted to be a part of that program. And I thought, um, especially LMU in particular, I thought it's nice that's like, you know, a smaller D1, but it's also, you know, I think they're, you know, a scrappy team. And I think, um, yeah, I think it'll be, it'll be exciting just to be part of that program. Absolutely. They've got a great baseball tradition down there. Um, so, you know, a lot of times people think of, um, you know, when to excel in a sport through high school and go to college, it's all about, you know, the fact that you're six foot four and can throw, you know, 85 miles per hour or whatever. But what, tell me about the mindset that it takes and, and, and what mindset you look for, you look for in like a teammate. Yeah, I think a good teammate, I think you, you know, off the field, I think you have to be a great friend, good person. But, um, you know, I think you have to have, you know, a little, you have to be competitive. You have to, you know, be ready to fight. And um, I think, you know, like when I'm up there, I try, I think I have the most confidence in the world and I know like whatever, you know, whoever I'm facing, I'm going to get you out. And I think you just have to have that mindset wherever you go. Awesome. Okay. I got one more question for you. So I know your brother can catch for you sometimes, which is really convenient as a pitcher, but can you catch for him? I cannot. No, he, <laughs> uh, he throws way too hard to uh, catch. I've tried and I've gotten hurt. Yeah. All right. Well, it's been great to see you guys, you know, with bond and help each other out. And uh, this is a great moment for you. So congratulations, Logan. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Can I have Nick Kresnak, please? Hey, how are you? Hey, Nick. How you doing? Pretty good. How about you? Good, good. Another baseball guy here. Um, again, I love to say it, the reigning Diablo Athletic League champions. And until there's another champion, they are the champion. Um, and missed your spring, which was which was a bummer. I know you had been, you know been planning for this for this spring, and we did see I know a, a few games and a lot of practices. So um, that was good to see. 
And so let, why don't you tell me, kind of like I asked Logan, just when it all started and how long you've been playing and, and uh, just a little bit about that part of it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I've been playing baseball for probably about 10 years now, ever since I was seven or eight years old. And I started with t-ball and continued all the way through Little League. And uh, that's where I really began to love the game, you know. Uh, Little League was just always so fun going up to Buckeye with all your friends. And that's when I really – Started to love it more than football, I think. And then uh, once high school came around, that's when I just started working really hard, trying to get recruited. And thankfully, uh, Washington gave me an opportunity. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I saw you hit a couple balls out of, out of Buckeye. And um, I know, you know, that place is a magical place for, for me and a lot of us in this community. Um, let me ask you this. Did any other, like, Kresnaks play baseball? Are you the, are you the first one? or? Yeah, so uh, actually my grandfather, uh, my mom's dad, he played baseball at Western Michigan, and he actually went to the College World Series, which is something I've always wanted to do since I was a little kid. So I think it's just awesome that I have someone in the family that I can talk to about baseball, and he really loves to see how the game's evolved since he played. So it's just cool having someone in the family who's done that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever been out to, to Omaha to see the College World Series? I have. It's pretty sweet. It's Hopefully I'll fantastic. get there great experience well listen I've had the pleasure of watching you since you were pretty small and uh you know always leading by example a great teammate so Washington is lucky to have you thank you appreciate it All right. good luck thank you okay could I have Scarlett McCullough please hi hi Scarlett how are you I'm good how are you good so you're going to Scripps um you know, Scripps, for those of you who don't know, is a, it's a super hard school to get into, and it's just rigorous and great reputation academically. Scarlett's going to run track there. Um, what's, your, what's your event? Um, I will be um, doing, like, sprints and then the long jump and pole vault. Got it. Oh, my gosh. You'll be busy. All right. So what, and now academically, do you have a major or do you have any plans or just get there and figure it out? So they, Scripps has a, a unique, um, like, humanities major where it's, like, interdisciplinary, and so you kind of create your own major, like, within the humanities and pick what you want to do. So I'm going to, like, do that and then kind of figure out what within that I want to do, I guess. Would be. Yeah. You know, that's, I, I like that format. I did a similar thing in college, and I'm glad I made the decision I was 20 and not 17. Um, but that's, that's super exciting. So let me ask you this. I know you, you love your sport. Um, you know, there's after college, there are opportunities, but you know, there's a lot of ways to stay involved in track and field. Um, do you have any thoughts of, of maybe coaching or, or just kind of staying involved as, as you, you know, you have these skills that a lot of people would love to learn about? Yeah, I definitely like would like to continue with track. I think it's a really unique community and I especially like pole vaulting because it's so specific. And like this year I was assistant coaching for Dabble Valley track which is like a youth track league but that also their season also got cut short but I hope to come back like next summer and help that's great yeah just pay it forward that's that's awesome well Scarlett congratulations great job Scripps is lucky to have you okay um let's see do I have Luke Miles Yeah. There he is. Hey, Luke, how are you, man? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. So you're going to be a Viking, huh? Yes. I'm playing right. baseball at Lawrence University. Playing baseball for Lawrence University, which is out in Wisconsin. Um, again, Luke, another member of the reigning Diablo Athletic League champion baseball team. Unfortunately, we did not have a spring season, but seeing Luke out there for years, um, you know, with the, with the glove and the bat and, uh, Nice to see you continuing that. Um, let me just ask you about kind of your lineage. Um, does anyone in your family, did they play college athletics or is this a new thing for your family or is it a tradition or? Yeah, my dad played college, division three college football at Amherst College in Massachusetts. Um, so yeah, my dad played col a college sport. Um, my mom was an amazing gymnast growing up too, so. I definitely think I get my athletic genes from them. Yeah, I think your dad was an Akalani's Don too. Yeah, he did. 
Was he like the athlete of the year for Akalani when he was here? Yeah, was one that a year different he, miles. He got athlete of the year. Yeah, okay. Let's we won't let his head get too big, but I think that is a fact. Um, let me ask you a little bit about the program. So, so it's not familiar to some of us here, but um, t talk a little bit maybe about your new coach or the new situation and what you're really looking forward to. Uh, yeah, so my coach, Coach Krepline, um, he's very young and energetic, which I like. Uh, I can tell he's very passionate for the baseball team and his program. Uh, he was very supportive of me during the recruiting process, um, and I like that he always wanted to know more about me and my family. Um, and not just my stats or baseball abilities. And then I visited in October, um, and I knew j it was a team that I just wanted to be a part of. Oh, man, that is that is so exciting. Well, congratulations. You know, Wisconsin, I've, I've been a few times only in the summer. The winters are a little different there. So yeah. <laughs> there might be some indoor BP in your future. Um, sure. but, uh, but it's a fantastic place with great people. So congratulations, Luke. Thank you. All right, can I have Aiden Mosley? Hey. Hey, how are you, Aiden? I'm great, how are you? Just fantastic. So you are going out to be a Kansas State Wildcat, heading out to Manhattan, Kansas. Yes, um, sir. Big school, great school, great athletic program, department. So that's really cool. You're going to run track out there. Um, are, you a, are you a sprint or a distance guy? I forgot. A uh, sprinter. Printer. Oh man, that is that yeah, is really cool. Printer. Yeah, yeah. So um listen, you know, track, I know that some of the middle school programs around here, I know at Stanley um are great and they've they've launched a lot of people to great things in, in track at, at you know Aklani and Campo. Um so what kind of how did it all start for you? Um well I I started uh in fourth or fifth grade I did one year uh just with my friends uh just to get outside my mom wanted me to get outside more um even though I was a very active child and then I did I did some Stanley track I did that also just kind of for fun uh I was a big soccer player so soccer was where my my head was at um track was just sort of for fun and then junior year uh coach Escobar convinced me to come out along with uh my other coach coach Kyle uh and they convinced me to come out and then halfway through the season I was like this is what I want to do so unfortunately I've only had one year under my belt but uh, yeah that's a that's a magical moment when you make that decision for yourself that's yeah. that's awesome so what about uh so academically um do you know what you're going to major in do you know what you want to be when you grow up do you know what uh what you're gonna have for breakfast tomorrow anything like that <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna have for breakfast tomorrow that'll be a surprise um but I I would like to uh be a music business uh be in the music business industry so um sort of uh in the in the field with the artists and the musicians um unfortunately Kansas doesn't have that they sort of have they have smaller things like that but I'm um, planning on just doing a business major and then hopefully using that and, and I can go wherever I want with that, but hopefully into the music business. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, now more than ever, you can do anything anywhere, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, listen, um, you know, I've seen you, I, I call, you know, I've, I've seen you around the campus a lot, seen you when you're a little guy just around. Um, I know you're a leadership man. Um, you're kind of a Don show up guy, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's great. So we're really proud of you and uh, good luck in Manhattan. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, can I please have Mala Newman? Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, love your background. So <laughs> you. Cal State East Bay Pioneers heading yeah. over the hill um, yeah. through the tunnel um, mm -hmm. to play girls water polo. Um, Mala is another member of this, this water polo team that you know, can't be celebrated enough and such a high level just within our own, um, you know, within our own pool. And the, you know, they pretty much accomplished everything that could be accomplished in, you know, in, in high school water polo. So um, you should be very proud of, of what you guys accomplished. Um, so water polo is, you know, a lot of sports you kind of start like 
LMYA soccer when you're four or five, but water polo, a lot of times people don't start till they're almost like preteens. Is that kind of how it went for you? Um, yeah, I started around when I was 10 or 11 years old. I, I had friends who played the sport and I really didn't know much about it. And then I, cause I played basketball when I was younger. And then one day I started just went to a practice and from then on, I absolutely fell in love with the sport. Yeah. So was there a little trepidation at first? I mean, you're getting in the, there's, you know, you're getting attacked by other people in the water. Some, <laughs> some people think like that didn't sound fun, but uh, yeah. how did you handle that? Yeah, I mean, at first I was I was a little scared. It was intimidating, of course, um, not knowing much about the sport and then having people try and drown you and having to keep up. But, you know, you slowly catch on and you get the hang of it. So it's you, you survive. It, it's fun, though, honestly. Yes. Well, you definitely survive. So tell me a little bit about the new the next situation. Do you have some familiarity with your new coach or, or what's uh, what's up with that? it was it was really great our coach um lisa is absolutely amazing um i've had a lot of contact with her over this quarantine and like um but just based on when i went the team was great like the atmosphere was just really warm and inviting and i'm really excited to play for them awesome well great molly you're gonna do you're gonna do great good luck and um yeah you're gonna be close enough to maybe come to some back to some matches for the Dons and things like that. And your friends uh, that are still here can come and see you. So that's fantastic. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, good luck. Thank you. Okay, Mikey O'Donnell. Is Mike O'Donnell in the house? There he is. Hey. How are you? I'm good, how about you? I'm doing great. So you're going up to play for the Aggies, UC Davis, play football? Yep. All right. Yep. You, are you doing some uh, some at home weightlifting here and there? Yeah, yeah. I've been going to Aquilani a lot and doing um, a lot of sprints, and then I've been using whatever I can pr really to just work out and lift. That's yeah. That's uh, that's that's exciting because you know you're going to see a, a lot of kids have been doing the same. Um, so, what do you yeah. think about you know sports in your family? I know there are some athletes there. Where do you think um, you got your athletic genes? Uh, I'd say a mix of my mom and my dad. I mean, my dad played football at um, Cal, and my mom played um, sports in high school. So I think I got a mix. Uh, and my mom's side is very athletic too. So uh, a mix of both, I'd say. Right. So you guys, and they bring that mindset of competition and hard work and those things that have helped you out, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. Um, so you've got a just a matter of weeks. Um, before graduation, I'm sure you're really hitting the books super hard at this point. Um, what, 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 would you, what advice would you give to some of the younger people coming up? I mean, you have some eighth graders sitting out there um, kind of, you know, hoping they can make their mark at Akalani's and hoping they can have the type of success you did. Um, what advice would you give them? Um, if they really want to play in, in college and play on the next level, um, it's a lot of hard work in practice and dedication uh, you really got to dedicate a part of your life to the sport um, it's just a lot of hard work and but if you have confidence in yourself and you believe in yourself uh, it can it can happen yeah absolutely so your foot your football team you know dal champs beat campo um all that stuff it always seemed like a really tight group to me that group of football players um and that's something you can bring up to davis don't you think Yes, definitely. We uh, we all were great friends uh, off the field, which is why I think we were very successful on the field because we all loved each other and uh, really wanted to win for each other. Absolutely. Well, great. Well, UC Davis is is lucky to have you, and and uh, good luck this season. We'll be watching you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, I am going to call out kaylee pond is kaylee pond in the house there she is how are you doing um i'm doing great how about you oh just fine so you're gonna go be a cyclone out at iowa state yep that's the plan all right and you've been committed there for quite a while huh yeah um i committed uh the beginning ish of my sophomore year right got it and, yeah. and you, those people out there probably know that 
Um, Kaylee is a two sport star at our school. Um, also a very good basketball player. Um, and you know, she's lucky she didn't hurt anybody over the years as many softballs flew onto the baseball field off her bat during batting <laughs> practice. But so far so good, you missed me a, enough times. Um, so I want to ask you just, just focusing on softball. So when did you start playing softball? I started playing softball when I was four and um, I was not very good at all. <laughs> it, was, it was a long process, but uh, I don't know. I was four and I just kept playing, so yeah. Yeah, something tells me you may not have been good when you were four, but you were probably pretty good when you were five. Um, yeah, my, <laughs> kind of, sort of. No, my dad was actually, he saw me play when I was four and I was trash absolute trash and then he was the coach he was my coach when I was five and he said that uh, if he's going to be the coach and his kid's going to be on the team his kid can't be bad so he <laughs> we'd practice a lot and then I started getting competitive and then I wasn't as terrible so uh, yeah uh, well well you've done some great things and then basketball you're going to still hoop it up every once in a while I mean they got a big court indoor court at Iowa State so I mean just for a little breather between studying, I'll probably go shoot some hoops. Not gonna, Absolutely. although I'm not playing it in college, I'm definitely not gonna lose my passion for that game as well. So. Great. And then, so can you tell me a little bit about kind of the, the new coach you're gonna be playing for and how that all played out with you choosing Iowa State so early? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the head coach is Coach Pink. Um, the assistant coach, uh, Coach Court, she was the one I really vibed with. Um, she actually tried to recruit me when she was with a different college. And um, yeah, overall, just the program is, they're all very close. And the big thing with them is they're very honest people because through like the whole recruiting process, it's not easy, especially when you have different coaches telling you that they're interested and maybe they're not. And they might be um, honestly lying, saying if they're interested or not. And with them, they were very straightforward from the beginning. They said that, hey, we think that you could be a difference maker here. And um, that's what really drew me to them was just how honest they were with me, and I just clicked with them. That's fantastic. That's how you. That's how you build a relationship, right? Yeah, so for sure. Good. Trust, we'll trust, get. and honesty. Yep, yep. Well, Kaylee, we're really proud of you for all you've done at Akalani's. You brought home some some banners for us in two sports, and um, it's been fun to see you out there. So good luck with at Iowa State. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Um, Jewel Romer, are you there? Oh. Hi, Jewel. How are you? Sorry, I'm going a little bit of a slightly alphabetical, but not fully alphabetical. Um, it's all good. Okay, so Jewel is, um, uh, she is going to be headed to, I forget, it's a school down in Palo Alto. Yeah. Stanford, that's right. She's going to Stanford. Um, so, you know, Jewel is a little bit of a, of a, local celebrity lately just because I mean she has been one of the top players and top contributors to you know the women's water polo team that again hasn't lost in forever has pretty much done everything they could do as a team She's had great success as an individual but not just in the pool but also in the classroom and really um, kind of typified what you know what a lot of us aspire to be as far as dedication to our sport um, so that's just fantastic um, you know, I wanted to ask you kind of what's next, right? I mean, you've, you've, uh, you're going to Stanford, there's a lot ahead of you, and where's your, where's your head at as far as how you're going to attack this? Well, hopefully in college we'll win a couple NCAA championships. Um, and I think with the high level competition Stanford like has to offer in um, like practices and in the games, hopefully I'll grow enough to make the Olympic team. That's it? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, listen, so what, tell me like, what about you that makes, that makes kind of water polo work? I mean, what, what is it that you're good at or that the way you think makes you not only a good player, but also, you know, a good teammate on teams and win championships? Um, I think that, like, my worth ethic and drive allows me to excel in the sport. Um, it takes a lot to be a good water polo player. Um, we're not just standing at the, like, on the bottom of the pole. So, um, it's a lot of work, and I think 
that my hard work over the past couple years has definitely made me excel. Absolutely. They say success is for people who are too busy to look for it, right? That's awesome. Hey, so Stanford's lucky to have you as a Cal guy. I begrudgingly say that. They are lucky to have you. Um, I can't wait to uh, see you maybe throw your Don's colors up when you're on that big stage somewhere. But um, congratulations, Jewel, and we look forward to seeing what's in the future for you. Thank you. All right. Um, Emily Sverak, are you around? Yeah, hi. There she is. Hi, Emily. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. So you're heading to Tufts in Massachusetts mm -hmm. to run track. Um, you know, people may or may not know that Tufts is one of the most selective colleges in the United States. Um, and uh, you've got to, you know, be able to do it in the classroom and on the field, or in your case, the track to, to, um, to be a part of that. So congratulations. A lot of Thank people you. are very proud of you for this. Um, so can I just ask you, you know, what about, you know, every athlete and every successful person seems to be able to look back and name people who have influenced them and helped them along in maybe tough times. Is there someone like that for you? Um, yeah, there have definitely been a lot of people who have influenced me and inspired me to run. But I think that the people who have made the most impact are all my coaches over the years, especially Coach Crane, because he really invested a lot into me when I first got to Akalani's. Um, and all my coaches have really helped me in different ways become the runner that I am. And I really appreciate that. And as well as my coaches, all my track friends have influenced me. I would not have been able to make it through all the long meets and the grueling workouts without them. Awesome. So now what about after college? You know, you know, there's, again, there's some opportunities for track after college, but um, you know, the benefits of running, the discipline it takes to, to excel and be consistent um, is that's a real, if you can master that, you've got, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. Is there any plans kind of after college, how running will play a part in your life? Um, so I won't be competing track after college, but running will definitely always be a part of my life. Running is really important to me because it's like an escape from the chaos of my everyday life. And it's really one of those things that like clears your mind and it's like meditation for me. And so I won't always be competing, but I'll know that I'll always be running after college just because of my passion for this sport. And literally all you need is a pair of shoes. So it will be easy for me to run wherever I end up. That's great. Now, are you, are you a distance runner or sprints? I forgot. I'm a sprinter and hurdler. Sprinter and hurdler. Oh my gosh, that's great. Well, congratulations. That's super exciting to go out, you know, across the country to such an esteemed place like Tufts, and you're going to do great there. So congrats. Thank you. Okay. Could I, maybe I can get Mac Darren on. You there, Mac? Yeah, I'm here. Yes. We've been waiting for you, buddy. Glad yeah. to have you. How are you Thank doing? You. Good, how are you? Fantastic. Um, so Mac is going to go play down to Long Beach State. He's a water polo player. Um, you know, Long Beach State, it's a, it's a, it's a big-time program. I mean, if you look at that roster, they've got, they've got players from all over the world. Um, they have obviously cast a wide net when they go look for talent, and uh, somehow they were able to get you down there as well. Um, they play a full schedule of, you know, all the top teams. I mean, it's a, a school of 38,000 students. I mean, this is, this is the real deal. So, so to get here, Mac, tell me about kind of your dedication, your sport, how many hours per week you devote, how, where you started, all that stuff. So I started playing water polo when I was uh, nine. And uh, it's a year-round sport with club and then the high school season too. And uh, the practices are normally five days a week for a couple hours a day. And then on top of that, there's also uh, the swim conditioning and uh, weight training. Uh, yeah, and then uh, you travel a lot also for water polo, uh, mostly Southern California. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, some, most people know that there's no such thing as an easy water polo practice. So like, <laughs> right? So that's, that's really impressive. All, all the polo players, what you 
do and the amount of kind of physical you know dedication it takes just just to be able to get in the pool and play a match um so now about long beach state tell me about kind of what brought you there what appealed to you was it you know athletically academically location what were the things that really kind of kind of hit, hit the nerve with you uh so i knew i wanted to stay in california and uh, I was drawn to Long Beach because I spent a lot of time playing down in LA too, and I love the LA area. Um, uh, when I went on my visit there, I uh, really liked the coach and the campus and the kids who showed me around there. The team was really nice too. Uh, uh, I also like their, uh, they have a good business program there and that's what I want to major in, so I'm excited for that. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. I mean, there is, so much opportunity for you down there no matter you know what you want to get involved in an absolute water polo hotbed i know that but also um just a dynamic place with a you're going to meet a lot of new people and and uh you've got a bright future ahead there so congratulations mac thank you um okay i am going to switch over to Actually, can I have Ivy Souza, please? Hi, Ivy. Hi. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, so Ivy's heading down to Chapman as well. She's a soccer player, and I'll say it again, I was lucky enough to experience the, the long, cold night out in, um, I think it was uh, maybe College of Marin or somewhere out there against Branson mm -hmm. and saw, saw these, I mean, incredible matches and just see incredible, um, hard work and fortitude and poise and all that stuff that led you guys to that NCS championship. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that was really was a great memory. And you were a huge part of that. Um, so now soccer, um, tell me kind of how it all began and how long you've been playing and, and what your early experience was like. So I've been playing soccer for about 14 years now. I first started playing when I was four for LMIA. Uh, I played for LMA for a few years until I wanted to try competitive soccer. So I tried out for La Mirinda and I played with La Mirinda for about six years until I moved clubs to the club that I'm currently on right now, which is Magic. And I've been playing with Magic for about five years now. Got it. And so what about the new, so tell about the new situation. So how was the, uh, I mean, the coach is a, is a new coach to you, obviously, but mm -hmm. what was it about Chapman that you said, you know what, of all the things I can do, you know, whether it be soccer or not, all the places I can go to college, like this seems like the right place for me. So something I really admired about my new coach is his honesty and drive to make every player as an individual better, like on and off the field. And that's something I really value in a coach because – it proves to me that he like truly cares about the team and me as an individual. And I also knew I wanted to be a part of the Chapman women's soccer program. Cause when I went down there earlier this year for the recruitment weekend, I really loved the family culture of the team and each member of the team made me feel as if I was already part of the team. And the little things like that just really made me finalize my decision on committing to Chapman. That's awesome. Well, I don't know if people know that the Sousa athletic tradition at Akalani's, but you definitely have continued that. Um, and Chapman's getting a great person, a great athlete, so they're lucky. Thank you. Um, let me ask you one last question. Okay, mm -hmm. This is maybe from the audience. Who's the best athlete in your family, you or your mom? Um, probably my mom, honestly. She exactly. played a lot more sports than me in high school. And yeah, she's probably better than me. <laughs> All right. Well, you're, you're not too bad yourself. But thank you, Ivy. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pivot over to Maddie Reese. Is Maddie Reese around? Hi, Mr. Mead. How are you? Hi, Maddie. Doing great. Thank you. Um, big volleyball fan here, obviously. Um, so Maddie's going, going to Penn, University of Pennsylvania, to play volleyball, going out there to the Ivy League. Um, you know, for those of you who are not familiar with Maddie's career at Akalani's, I mean, she's a four-year varsity player, four-year starter, 
Um, she was part of two of the best teams in the history of Akalani's, one of them the state championship in 2016, then this past year, um, NCS runner up. Um, and she's been a kind of a core leader of those of all those teams. So I'm really excited that she's going on to play and we're going to be able to watch you um, play some more volleyball. I know I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, so let me ask you this question. Um, as far as influences on your life, I know you have a lot of role models um, around and, um, and you've always been a very hard worker. So who are the people that have kind of helped propel you to this stage? Uh, first and foremost, definitely my family. They're my number one fans. And I think, you know, they're kind of the definition of tough love. They always want what's best for me and they push me to my limits, but it's all in the name of making me better and they want to see me succeed. Um, another really big inspiration is Andy Schroeder. Uh, I'm not sure that everybody knows him, but he's my club director at Acceleration Volleyball Club in Martinez. And he's really big. He's been a really big influence to me because four years ago, he accepted me into that community and uh, he really helped me reach my goals. Awesome. Okay, so now the next step. So you've got, I know Penn's got a new coach. There's a lot mm -hmm. of excitement around the program. Um, you've got an Akalani's alumni there that's made a big impact in Parker Jones. Um, but you're, you know, you're the next Don to come in. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about the recruiting process and, and, you know, if you've got to know the new coach or what, what info you have and, and what you're excited about. Uh, yeah, so I began my recruiting process my freshman year, and it just began with some emails and phone calls and sending film to coaches. I had a phone call with the old coach from Penn around December of my junior year, and then I visited in January, and that's when I committed. Um, and then my new coach, her name is Meredith Schumann. She recently committed to coaching at Penn around Two months ago, she's fairly young, but she played Division One volleyball herself. She played professionally in Switzerland. So it's really nice because she knows what the lifestyle is like as a Division One athlete. And she's really trying to implement new policies to make sure that everything is really efficient with us and that we do have the best experience, not just as athletes, but as students as well. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean you're in the Ivy League, so that's um, mm -hmm. obviously going to be a you know a lot of work but you're used to that I mean I think Akalani is a pretty hard school personally um, but uh, you know I think you're you know you're obviously your talent but your dedication and your kind of approach to everything is really going to help you there so congratulations good luck and um, and uh, we'll be watching you thank you thank you so much all right Okay, um, I'm gonna go pivot to Tommy Thrasher. How you there doing? He is. Are you there? I'm doing all right, how are you? Doing great. Good, thanks. Um, okay, future dirtbag, and I mean that in the nicest way. Yeah. The Long Beach State dirtbags. Tommy's gonna be playing baseball there. Um, you know, our, the uh, first baseman for the Diablo Athletic League champions, and unfortunately had his uh, his uh, spring season cut short, but um, still tons of success over a lot of years on the baseball field. Um, you know, uh, let me ask you this about Long Beach State. Again, we were talking to Mac a little bit. It's a it's a big school, um, tons of opportunity, huge talent pool. Um, what kind of made you pick that? I know you had a lot of options, and you settled on that particular spot. So. Um... I've always really liked Long Beach. It's uh, one of the only schools that has beach in the uh, name of the school. So I like the beach, I like SoCal. And um, <clears throat> my uncle, he actually uh, played for Long Beach back in 90, 90 92, and uh, when they went to the World Series. And um, I've just been getting that ingrained in my head, like, oh, Long Beach is good, Long Beach baseball. And I've just kind of fallen in love with it over the years. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So, let me ask you this: I know you were a you know, you've been a two sports star at Akalani's, you know, a football player, baseball player, and probably could have played a few other things if you wanted to. Um, what is it about? Do you think your football experience helped you with baseball and vice versa? I would say like they both helped each other. Um, football, I had an amazing teammates, amazing team coaches, and. Um, it kind of just toughened me up for baseball or what was to come for baseball. And then um, same thing with baseball, with football. I mean, it kind of just got in your head, like, 
failure is okay and you have to overcome it because there's going to be failure in baseball. There's going to be failure in football. If you're successful three out of 10 times in baseball, you're doing pretty good. That's great. That's the growth mindset, right? That can, you can apply that to anything around here. So that's, that's a great way to look at it. You know, I've been around you and and the the team and seeing you on the field and, and, you know, through my son, Peter, um, I know you've been a great teammate, um, a great example setter. Um, and I think that that that's something you could bring up, bring down to Long Beach. Do you think? Yeah, uh, that's me. Keep components my uh, playing there. Absolutely. So let me ask you one last question: Has anyone called you the next Jason Giambi yet? So actually, um, it's pretty funny. <laughs> my um, my uncle and uh, Jason Giambi they were same year at Long Beach, and um, they became really good friends. And um, my mom and my, my uh, family are actually pretty good friends with the Giambis, so hopefully I'll be the next one. There you go. That would make your brother Jeremy Giambi, <laughs> which is okay, too. Yeah. Hey, listen, we're really proud of you. You know, you're going you're gonna to do great down there. We're all going to be keeping tabs on you um, and watching you, and um, we're super excited to become uh, Long Beach State baseball fans. Thanks awesome. a lot. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, moving along. Lauren Westergren. Hi. Hi, Lauren. How are you? Good, thanks. Love the wallpaper. Thank you. Um, so Lauren is going down to play lacrosse at San Diego State for the Aztecs. Um, super jealous. Love it down there. Um, so let me just ask you, Lauren, um, about kind of the, your family history with sports. Is there anyone in your family make it to this level to play college sports? And, and do you think that kind of is, you know, running in your veins there to, to be a, you know, have this kind of ability? Yeah, I do. I've had sort of a really long line of people in my family that have played sports in college. And both of my parents played sports in college at Stanford. My dad played soccer and my mom played tennis, so I really think that's contributed to my athleticism. Right, and they probably brought that, like we said, that competitive mindset and the, yeah, you know, helped you understand the dedication and uh, that it took to get you where you're going now. That's, that's really neat. Um, so you graduate in less than a month. Um, I know you're probably studying really hard right to the end, like all the seniors I know. Um, and we've got a new crop of kids coming in and we've got some, some underclassmen who are reaching their upper class years and they're excited to kind of, you know, make it to varsity, try to make, um, you know, an all league or try to become a starter or, or try to really help their team accomplish goals. Like what kinds of things would you tell them as someone who's done all that? Um, I would just say really always push yourself to be the best person and like, just always keep working and really just don't think you can't do enough to, to like get yourself to where you want to be and it's all going to work out for you in the end. That's good advice. And I know you played, you played more than one sport at Akalani's, is that right? Over the years? More than two sports? Yeah, I've played multiple, I've played many sports. <laughs> I think I remember at one point I was like, that girl's on every single team. Like if we had a bowling team, she would be on the bowling team. So you've always been a, been a great athlete. Um, and, you know, girls lacrosse is, is become a huge sport at our school. I mean, they have 40 something kids on the team. Um, what would you say to someone who's thinking about trying a new sport, right? Someone says, you know, I've never played, I've never wrestled before, or I've never, um, you know, tried track and field. Like, should I do it? Or am I going to be embarrassing myself or what? Well, I would say totally go for it because, I mean, I didn't start playing lacrosse until eighth grade. And, I mean, here I am. And I just think there's no, it's never too late to try a new sport. And it's, lacrosse is so much fun. So I love it. And I think any other girl who wants to try lacrosse should definitely try it. Awesome. Well, great. Well, congratulations, Lauren. And uh, best of luck at San Diego State. Go Aztecs. Thank you. Okay, is Brooke Westfall in the house? Hi. Hi, Brooke. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good, thanks. Man, we're, we're turning out these water polo players. So Brooke is going to UC Santa Barbara, um, play water polo. Again, another member of this, this amazing team. You're going to have to be coming back when you're my age for the reunion and, you know, 
probably bust out the old trophy someday. You guys just were incredible for a long time and also a pretty close group, right? As, as a team. Yeah, we um, had great chemistry outside of the pool, which I think really contributed to our success in the pool. Um, we were just like so goofy. We always had nicknames for each other. My nickname was Chief. Um, like, you know, it was just always a fun time, whether or not we were in the pool or out or at bondings and whatnot. Yeah. That's awesome. As far as high school nicknames go, that's pretty darn good. Thank you. Um, so how long have you been playing water polo? Again, it's a sport. A lot of times kids don't start until they're a little older. Well, I actually started playing in fifth grade. Um, my dad and my brother played and um, they really got me into it. But um, I initially started out on a boys team. I played um, for a summer uh, when I was 10 with the boys and then switched over to Diablo girls team. And um, Jules' dad was actually my first coach, which was cool. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So here you are now. Um, you've got a whole new world down there at Santa Barbara. I just think Isla Vista when I ever think of Santa Barbara. It's such a magical place. Um, so tell me a little bit about the recruiting crowd process and your new coach and what, uh, and what you're looking forward to. Yeah, so um, I think I first fell in love with Santa Barbara my sophomore year. I did like a normal college tour not associated with water polo. And um, that was a cool like outside perspective just to see what the campus was like. And then that summer I went and um, went to a camp and played. Um, and the coach is great. I love her. She's also, um, she played at UCLA and on the national team with my current water polo coach. So we kind of have that uh, like mutual um, like bond through knowing my coach. Um, and just the environment, the girls on the team that I've met are amazing. It's so positive. And I mean, it's on the beach. Like, I think it's the best of both worlds. Yeah. That is so exciting. Um, okay. Let me ask you this. So you were on one of the top high school teams in the nation, right? You were at one of my opinion, one of the tougher, if not the toughest public school around, right? So do those things prepare you for walking onto that campus and making your mark? Definitely. Um, I think one of the best things about um, Akalani's was that we were always pushing each other. Um, like we're best friends in and out of the pool, but more so when you're in the pool, you're just like competing and making each other better. And so I'm excited for um, Santa Barbara because you know, you're just playing with people, especially the older girls that are better than you. And so that's just gonna make you an even better player. And um, I'm really, happy to have had um, the experience with Akalani's and have been playing against teams from all over because we kind of get a glimpse of what it's like to put your heart and soul into something and then be playing with people that are better than you and whatnot and get better or against people that are better than you yeah absolutely all the top athletes embrace the competition right sounds like that's what you're saying so that's great well congratulations Brooke um, we're all very proud of you and good luck in Santa Barbara Thank you so much. Okay, Steve Williams, I think, is our last person. Are you there, yeah. Stephen? Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Are you wearing that sweatshirt? Were you doing one of those wrestler workouts where you run six miles in 100 degree heat in your sweatsuit? No, I haven't done that in, uh, in a couple months, so I'm going to try and keep it that way. God, there you go. Well, great. Yeah. Well, Steve is. Um, He's going to San Francisco State. He's going to be a Gator. He's going to wrestle for them. Um, he's had a great career at Akalani's um, in a sport that, that uh, is just kind of growing here, and, and it's been really exciting to watch his success. Um, let me ask you this. Um, a lot of times, or almost all the time, that someone reaches kind of the next level in their sport, they look back and they say, you know what, this, these are the people that really helped me get through the times I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it. I wanted to quit. I wanted to go another direction. They helped me out. Who are those people for you? Uh, I definitely say my parents. Uh, they really helped me along with that. But probably the most important um, is my coach uh, from Campo. But I've known him since I was five, and he's a family friend, and he's really helped me through my whole career. So, and he also is good friends with the SF State coach, so he's really pushing for me to go there and wrestle with his friend. So, awesome. Well, that'll be great to have your, your parents, your family, and your friends, and 
and uh, some maybe some Akalani's Dons come, you know, check out some of your meets and, and watch you succeed right here in the Bay Area. Yeah. Um, now, what about academically for college? Do you have a major you're thinking about, or, or um, you know, do you do you, uh, you just kind of get there and figure it out as you go? Uh, I think I'm just going to kind of get there and figure it out as I go. I've got some time to decide and figure it out. So, right. And then there's I heard uh, something that you may be interested in going into the armed forces at some point. Uh, yeah, that's been my plan since I was 11. So. Uh, after college, I was going to go uh, to office, officer candidate school and become an officer and then join the military. I already feel safer about our country. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. That is a, that's a great goal, Steve, and that's fantastic. Really, I mean, it, more unique nowadays than it has been, and, and just uh, embracing a real challenge um, is kind of in your DNA, it seems to me. Um, yeah. Now, what about kind of wrestling or just sports in general after college? Is this... Uh, you know, is this something you're going to continue, maybe maybe get involved in coaching or something like that? Uh, right after college, I don't think so, but definitely wrestling will help me with the military because of all of the mental strength I've learned and all of the discipline. But um, maybe later in my life I can help coach, or even since I'll be around here, because we're not starting until January, so maybe I can help out around here and coach high schoolers. That's awesome. Always great to give back. It feels good. Yeah. So let me ask you this one. So there's a kid, let's say he's coming to Akalani's, he's an eighth grader, he weighs 102 pounds soaking wet, he's looking for a sport, he wants to, he's, someone says, why don't you try wrestling? He says, there's no way, I don't want to get wrapped into a pretzel by some big, huge dude. What would you tell that, that kid? Uh, I'd tell him definitely to try wrestling. I had one of my best friends um, who became a very good wrestler, started off his freshman year at... 94 pounds, I think. And then he ended up his senior year placing uh, fifth at North Coast. So wow. he started off really small and then he just worked hard and dedicated and then he uh, got almost as far as he wanted to go, so. That's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that's really a theme with a lot, of, a lot of the athletes we've talked to today that, you know, they weren't necessarily, you know, they were not, unintimidated let's just say they, you know everyone has trepidation about going out for something and really you know should I dedicate myself to this should I put myself out there and um, you guys are all examples of, of that kind of working out so congratulations we're looking forward to um, you doing big things over there with the Gators and um, you know we'll be keeping tabs on you Stephen. Thank you. All right. Okay so that is um, that is our group I would um, again just um, can I get a little more applause? Yeah, and let's bring uh, let's have all our let's have all our student athletes come on screen one last time. Um, we just want to thank everyone for for being here. Dan, thanks so much for leading us through the night and asking those questions. Julia, thank you again so much for your help in organizing. Uh, the it's just so cool looking at the screen and knowing that the backdrops that that are here, whether you're whether you're able to get that virtual backdrop or you're repping on your shirt or whatever it is that you have. Um, that we know like what became what became before that backdrop is um, is the the Akalani's blue uh, with that with that a that's in the background there of Dan and, and Julia of Miss Bates and Mr. Mead and so um, Don's we're just so proud of you um, congratulations and um, yeah thank you guys all thank everyone for coming out tonight Dan do you have any any closing remarks um, I would just say again you know this doesn't happen without without Julia Bates um, you know, she's a parent of two student athletes here at the school, and she constantly raises her hand and, and um, offers her, her talent and energy and different things. She sits on the boosters board with us, um, just creative, organized it all. So um, again, I think that this event touches a lot of families. It, another part of our kind of community, community initiatives and Don show up, and this one's um, because of Julia. So thank you very much. Yep. All right, you guys who are attendees, thanks for joining us. Uh, once again, congratulations and have a wonderful night. Go Dons. Go Dons.